In today's video, we're gonna find out if you can turn a Commander Core XT into a Commander Core. And more specifically, can I control the AIO using the Commander Core XT? Now, one of the key differences in these two controllers is that the Commander Core, which you primarily only will get with the AIO, you would never really buy this separately from an AIO. Uh, the one thing it has is the 24 pin port. That is where the AIO pump head plugs into. That gives you control over the pump speeds and the RGB on the pump itself. Now the Commander Core XT doesn't have that. It has an extra temperature probe port, an RGB port, and this little ID port. So I've known since first looking at these two devices that they're virtually identical. When you line them up side by side, you know the RGB hub and the PWM fan speed hub and the cabling really is just all the same on here. There's no difference. So at least to some extent inside here, it's got the same set of electronics. So we'll get back to that in just a second because I haven't actually done this yet. I don't know if this will work, but I've got a couple of ideas of why and how it might work, which I'll share with you in just a minute. So recently I was doing that video for the visored lighting effect in Corsair IQ. Now, if you haven't seen that video, it's obviously something that everybody who's using Corsair lighting needs to know. So go check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. So in preparation and research for that video, uh, I had this grand idea of building a big wall with a whole bunch of RGB fans from Corsair and all of the different controllers and just kind of making it look really cool. But somewhere in the testing and setup of that, uh, I smelled that magic smoke, you know, release the magic smoke is what we used to say. Now, the only really thing that was different about that day was I was using a new Corsair USB hub. So long story short, I have since used that USB hub and never could find any problem with it. It's worked fine since. I've plugged into every port on it and it's not ever had a problem. And so anyways, I kind of eliminated that and just started testing each controller one by one. As it turns out, both of the Commander Core XT and the Commander Core were just toast. They were both gone. Neither would be recognized in IQ and everything else worked. You know, I had a lighting node core, command, a couple of Commander Pros, uh, you know, with all of the RGB hubs on it and so on and so forth. And so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to just go ahead and crack the case open on these because these have all been good working controllers for me. I've really had very little problems with them. So I just want to share with you what I found when I opened both of these devices up and then you'll immediately see how the idea for this uh, comes to light here. And I will show you the chip that burnt and it's the same chip on both of them. And I don't actually know what chip this is. I gotta do a little bit of research. If anybody knows, put it in the comments below. I imagine they could probably be repaired. Now I am gonna preface this video by saying, I'm not suggesting that you go do this. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not affiliated with Corsair and I'm not part of their engineering team. Uh, you know, I don't have any way to know if there's any long-term effects you know, by you know, even trying what we're about to do. Now, I'm not in a hurry to blow up another uh, Commander uh, Core XT, but you know, I just thought this might be an interesting video to do. Plus, I'm curious if we can do it. Anyways, I would recommend that you contact Corsair if you need a Commander Core, uh, get the replacement from them. This video really is just more intended for fun. If you do try it, just do so at your own risk. Uh, you'll be able to see here in a minute whether I was successful doing it uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and pop these open. Now getting these devices open is relatively simple. You just want to take some tools, you know, like from iFixit, just these prying and opening tools. Uh, there's just a couple of clips here and there's no screws holding these cases together. You just want to kind of use these tools and kind of just slowly work it into the seams and get those clips undone. And once you get those undone, you're just going to kind of peel both of these apart and it should just be immediately apparent uh, why I got the idea for this video. It really is exactly the same card that's in here. The Commander Core XT is just simply using a little daughter card that's connected into that 24 pin port. So I immediately thought, well, can I just take this daughter card off and have it act like a Commander Core? I could even swap the cards over because it's just physically identical. Now, there's a couple of considerations here and that's gonna be are these running the same firmware? Are there any differences electronically that I can't see? And you know, that's where we're taking a bit of a risk here, even though they look identical to me. And I personally think there's not any really electronic differences in, as far as voltages and things like that. Uh, there could be, but we'll find out in a minute if this works. Again, I don't recommend that you do any of this. This video is for entertainment and just for fun. And it's very possible I'll blow up this other Commander Core XT, which will be sad, but we're gonna uh, do it for the fun of it. So anyways, 
let's go ahead and get to swapping these over and then we'll just I'm just going to plug it in uh, without the AIO connected because I could also damage the AIO here but we're going to just plug it in by itself to the PC and see if IQ detect what it detects it as does it detect it what does it do with it you know and then if everything looks good there regardless of how it detects it we'll plug in the AIO and we'll see can I control that AIO with it what does it do at that point so the commander core, if you plug this in without the AIO, it will detect it as a commander core in IQ. Uh, as soon as you connect in the AIO and power it up and Corsair IQ detects it, it will then detect it as the AIO pump. That's what the little panel will show in IQ. Now the Commander Core XT obviously just always shows as a Commander Core XT. So after getting these devices plugged in and powered back up, uh, it is still detecting it as a Core XT, not totally unexpected. And, uh, you know, removing the daughter card made no difference. So I went ahead and took this opportunity to verify that the firmwares are different on here. The Core XT is 1.4.62 and the Commander Core is 2.11.221. So I went ahead and just plugged in the pump head. Now it made no difference. It still detects it as a Commander Core XT, uh, which is not totally unexpected. Uh, but the pump head does have power to it and I do get some RGB lighting out of it. Primarily, it's just blinking a red light that really isn't doing anything. Our next step is we are going to have to actually get the firmware updated for this uh, in some fashion. Now, there are some ways to update the firmware and flash the firmware. I don't know that I've really ever discussed it, and I just really never had a need to do it. But if you press the reset button you know, through the little pinhole here, and while you're holding that, if you plug it in, it does expose a little uh, you know, virtual storage drive on here, which I have to believe is for Corsair to force a firmware update on the controller. So before I proceed here, I just wanted to go ahead and get a backup of this firmware.bin file that is exposed when you reset it. Uh, so I did that on both controllers here and grabbed the file that was there. Uh, the file names are the same and the file size and the time and date of the file is the same. So I loaded it up in PowerShell did just a quick MD5 sum calculation on each file. Uh, they are in fact different, so, uh, but at least this point moving forward, I've got a good backup of each of these files just in case I need them. Now, what I chose to try first was just do the browse for firmware function in the device settings. And I just pointed it to that bin file that I backed up in the previous step. And I'm trying to load the one uh, for the commander core onto the core XT, but it just tells me that it's an invalid file. And I went ahead and tried the other file as well, the one for the Core XT. It's an invalid file as well. So this obviously is not the method to do this. Now, it may be that Corsair would give you the proper uh, you know, firmware update file. I couldn't find one online after just a quick uh, search. But again, Corsair is really not going to condone this type of behavior. So I think at this point, we're going to have to re-expose uh, you know, that little storage area. And I'm going to have to try replacing the bin file that's there. So this is an area where I think we could potentially brick this device. But what I went ahead and did is I reset the Commander Core XT, exposing this little storage drive. And I went ahead and deleted the bin file that was here. And then I went to where I had backed up the bin file from the commander core. Now, in this case, I've got a working commander core. Uh, you may not have that, but I just went ahead and copied and you know dragged and dropped that bin file right back onto the storage area. Now, at that point, uh, after it's done copying, which doesn't take very long, it's not a very big file, uh, I, you do need to unplug and reset the device. It doesn't automatically redetect it. So, but boom, there you go. After resetting it, 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 it detects it now as an H150i uh, Elite Capellic. So it's now detecting it as a Commander Core. And I was able to now control the uh, RGB lighting on it. I could see the pump speed, so on and so forth. Everything looks like it's in good shape here. However, one thing I did notice was a problem is on the pump here, normally you should be able to apply a pump profile to it you know, from quiet, balanced, extreme, variable speed. There's a couple of different settings you should be able to put here, but it doesn't allow me to do that. So I did try a couple of troubleshooting steps to get that pump problem fixed. And, you know, I just tried forcing a firmware update and I can confirm it's now on the Commander Core firmware, not the Core XT. Uh, that didn't do any good. Uh, power cycling it, rebooting the PC, things of that nature. Nothing really seemed to bring that ability to change the pump speed. And that's gonna be pretty critical uh, for this to be a success. Uh, the only thing uh, I found that finally did fix it was uninstalling IQ and reinstalling it. 
it obviously maybe had associated, I don't know if it's a serial number or something on that board with a particular device type. I, I just really don't know. But uninstalling it and reinstalling it fixed the problem. After rebooting it, I can now control the pump speed. I can control the fan speeds. I can control all the RGB lighting. It's detecting properly. It looks like it's got the right uh, firmware version on it. So at this point, it looks like it's been a full success. And the only thing that was required was exposing that little storage drive and swapping over the bin files. So here I am coming back at you a couple of days later. Now I've had this uh, PC running over in the corner for a couple of days on my Frankenstein Commander Core, and it's been running just fine. Uh, I'm still able to control the pump, the RGB lighting, you know, I'm getting all the coolant temps back. It largely is just acting like a normal Commander Core. And my conclusion is, is that it is a Commander Core. The, the board uh, between the Core XT and the Commander Core appear to be exactly the same. It's the same part number or revision number written on them. So I've no doubt that it's the same hardware. And really to me, the only difference between the two is the firmware that's running on them. To answer your question, yes, I did put the controller back. So uh, I put the firmware for the Commander Core XT back on it. And I put the daughter card back in and I put it all back together and it is back to a Commander Core XT. Seems to run fine there. I tried the RGB port and the temperature probe port and everything looks to be in good order. So see, it's relatively simple to flash it back and forth between these different firmwares. Uh, with that said, I did a little bit of searching online and I've come across uh, you know, some information that looks like a lot of Corsair devices have the ability to expose the CRP disabled storage area. Uh, but one of the posts, uh, I did see Corsair give a public service announcement about this, basically not to do this in that the reality of bricking your device uh, is real. If you put the wrong firmware on, and especially with these controllers, in order to expose that, you have to unplug it from SATA power and plug it in live, which is generally not a great recommendation to do it. So even though technically we can do it, and that's a mechanism by which you could put, you know, replace the firmware on it if it's bricked, uh, you know, and again, that might be a way to save one that's just broke. You know, even if the chip isn't burnt on it, maybe you could uh, revive it doing that. Maybe the firmware files got corrupt or something like that. But uh, with that said, Corsair went out of their way to state that they don't have a repository for, of these files for that exact reason. Is, is they don't want you to accidentally put the wrong firmware file on it and brick the device. And so because of that, I really can't recommend that anybody go do this. Uh, if you need a replacement Commander Core, contact Corsair. Now, like I said, the ones I've seen online have often been sold out, so I don't know what the availability of these is. Now, keep in mind, too, even without uh, dumping on the new firmware, just plugging it into the Core XT gave it power. It's, I think it's just at the very lowest speed, the quiet profile, but nonetheless, it did get power because you could find yourself in a pinch needing to just get it working. Anyways, again, if you want to go down this realm, you need a replacement, contact Corsair. At a minimum, call them and ask them if they'll give you the firmware file if you wanted to try to upgrade, you know, or Frankenstein a Core XT. But anyways, this video largely was just for entertainment and just exploring these controllers and getting to know them and seeing what will make them tick. So... It's all been kind of fun to do. But anyways, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this video, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help out the best I can when I can. And uh, that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.